assalamu alaikum this is lecture 22 of data security and encryption and in this lecture i am going to provide you a summary and the application of cryptographic hash functions so here are the lecture contents in the start we will look at the application of cryptographic hash functions the typical applications are message authentication and digital signatures. This lecture will provide a brief introduction about the two applications and other applications. However, the detailed description of these two applications will be discussed in the next lectures. Then there are two simple hash functions which will be described in this lecture. And finally, this lecture will conclude with the requirement and security of cryptographic hash functions. So hash function accepts a variable length block of data m as an input and produces a fixed size hash value. So at this moment hash function is a black box which takes as input the value of our plain text as m and produces its fixed size hash values represented as in equation h is equal to a hash function performed on the value m. A good hash function has the property that the results of applying the function to a large set of input will produce the outputs that are evenly distributed and apparently random. So in general terms, the principal object of hash function is to provide integrity of the data and it is done with the hash values so a change to any bit or bits in the results with the high probability a change in a change to the hash value so cryptographic hash function uh, is a kind of function that is needed for security applications so an algorithm which is computationally infeasible to find either a data object that maps to a pre-specified hash result the one-way property and the two data objects that map to a same hash result it is referred as the collusion free property so because these because of these characteristics hash function are often used to determine whether or not data has been changed so again the purpose of the hash function is to provide the integrity of the data so this figure depicts the general operation of a cryptographic hash function and typically the input is padded out to an integer multiple of some fixed length in many cases the length of padding is 10 to 24 bits and the padding includes the value of the length of original message in the bits m and the length of the field is a security measure to increase the difficulty for an attacker to produce the uh, produce an alternative message with the same as value so as you can see the original input is referred as m and it has the length of l bits and which is padded with the p value and it is passed to a hash function which produces a hashed value of fixed length so perhaps the most versatile cryptographic algorithm is the cryptographic hash function it is used in a wide variety of applications and the internet protocols to better understand some of the requirements of security implications for cryptographic hash function it is useful to look at the range of applications in which it is employed so one of the basic application is message authentication system so as you know message authentication is a mechanism or a service used to verify the integrity of a message message authentication assures that the data received are exactly as 
enter it means there is no modification there is no insertion deletion or a replay attack so in many cases there is a requirement that the authentication mechanism assures that the identity of the sender is valid so when a hash function is used to provide a message authentication the hash function value is referred as message digest so the essence of use of hash function for the message integrity is described in this figure so the sender computes a hash message value as a function of its function of the bits in the message and transmits both the hash value and the message the receiver performs the same hash calculation on the message bits and compares its value with the incoming hash value so if there is a mismatch between the hash value of the sender and the receiver the receiver knows the message is possibly altered because of the different hash value the hash value must be transmitted in a secure fashion that is the hash value must be protected so that if an attacker alters or replaces the message it is not feasible for the attacker to also alter the hash value to fool the receiver so this step of attack is shown in the figure here represented as man in the middle attack so in this example the user alice transmits a data block and attaches a hash value with it so the attacker dot intercepts the message alters or replaces the data block and calculates and attaches a new hash value and then sends it to the other user bob now bob receives the altered data with the new hash value and does not detect the change so to prevent this attack the hash value generated by alice must be protected this figure shows a variety of ways in which hash code can be used to provide message authentication first of all if you consider this example the message plus concatenated hash code is encrypted using symmetric encryption by using a key because only a and b share the secret key the message must have come from a and has not been altered the hash code provides the structure of redundancy required to achieve the authentication because encryption is applied to entire message plus hash code confidentiality is provided similarly if you look at the second example only the hash code is encrypted using the symmetric encryption so this reduces the processing burden for the applications that do not require the confidentiality similarly the third example shows that it is possible to use a hash function but no encryption for the message authentication this technique assumes that the two communicating parties share a common secret value s so a computes the hash value over the concatenation of the message and the secret value s and then appends the result to the hash value because b processes uh, processes the s it can recompute the hash value to verify because the secret value is itself uh, it's not sent and an opponent cannot modify the intercepted message and cannot generate the false messages in the last example confidentiality can be added to approach the method in the above described method by encrypting the entire message plus the hash code 
so when uh, in hash functions uh, if the confidentiality is not required you can use the method b and it has the advantage over the method a and the method d which encrypts the entire message in that less computation is required nevertheless there has been growing interest in the technique that avoid encryption such as described in the uh, section c so several reasons for this interest are pointed out by number of authors one obvious reason is uh, that we have been discussing in many lectures that encryption software is relatively slow even though the amount of data can be encrypted is very small there may be a steady stream of uh, messages into uh, the algorithm and out of the system encryption hardware also costs and low cost chip implementation of des however available but the costs add up if all the nodes in the network must have the capability so encryption hardware is optimized towards the large data sizes for small block of the data a high proportion of time is spent in initialization and invocation overhead and finally encryption algorithms may be covered by the patent and there is a cost associated with licensing their use more commonly a message authentication is achieved using a message authentication code mac also known as a keyed hash function typically used between the two parties to share a secret key to authenticate information exchange between two parties the value it takes a well as input a secret key and a data block and produces a hash value known as message authentication code which is associated with the protected message so if the integrity of the message need to be checked the mse function can be applied to the message and the result compared with the associated mse value so if an attacker who alters this message will be unable to alter the associated mac value without the knowledge of secret key you can note that the verifying the party also knows the sending party is because no one else knows the secret secret key note that the combination of hashing and encryption result in an overall function that is in fact a message authentication code that is a method authentication code is implemented by the encryption of a hash function on an input value with the secret key key is a function of all variables in the needed in the uh, encryption algorithm and that is secure against an opponent who does not know the secret key so in practice a specific method uh, message authentication code algorithms are designed that are generally more efficient than an encryption algorithm we will discuss uh, the message authentication code in lecture number 24 in more detail another important application of hash algorithms is digital signatures digital signatures operation is similar to that the message authentication code so in the case of digital signature the hash value of the message is encrypted with the user's private key so anyone who knows the user's public key can verify the integrity of the message and an attacker who wishes to alter the message would need to know the user's private key so implications of digital signatures go beyond just message authentication more detail about the digital signatures will be discussed in lecture number 25 
This figure illustrates in a simplified fashion that how a hash code is used to provide digital signatures. So there are two possible scenarios represented as scenario A and scenario B. So if you look at the scenario A, the hash code is encrypted using public key encryption with the sender's private key PRA. This provides authentication. It also provides a digital signature because only sender could have produced the encrypted hash code because he has the private key. In fact, the essence of the digital signature is represented in this technique. If you look at the second example, so if a confidentiality as well as digital signature is desired, then the message plus the private key encrypted hash code can be encrypted using the symmetric secret key. This is a common technique for confidentiality as well as digital signatures. There are some other applications of hash functions. Hash functions are commonly used to create one-way password files. The hash of a password is stored by an operating system rather than the password itself and it is a common application that whenever you are using a database password, your password is stored in a hash value and it should be stored in the hash value rather than the actual password. So this provides that the actual password is not retrievable by a hacker who gains access to the password file or the database system. So in simple terms, when a user enters in the password, the hash of that password is compared to the stored hash value for the verification or the login. This approach to the password protection is used by the most operating systems. Hash functions can be used for intrusion and virus detection and in this way you can store a hash function for each file on a system and secure the hash values. So one can later determine if a file has been modified by recomputing the same hash function on the file. So an intruder would need to change the value of f file without changing the hash function. And cryptographic hash algorithm can be used to construct the pseudo random number generator function or pseudo random functions. A common application for hash based pseudo random function is for the generation of symmetric keys. To get some feel for the security consideration involved in the cryptographic hash functions, two simple insecure hash functions are presented. So consider two simple insecure hash functions that operate using the following general principle. First of all, the input is viewed as a separate sequence of n bit blocks and secondly the input is processed by one block at a time in an iterative function to produce an n bit hash function. So one of the simplest hash function in this term is bit by bit exclusive or of every block and it can be represented as the cipher of for each block is composed of a bit and uh, bits of all blocks XOR with each other. This produces a simple parity for each bit position and is known as longitudinal redundancy check and it is reasonably effective for random data as random data integrity check. Each n bit hash value is equally likely. Therefore, the probability that the data error will result is 
in an unchained hash value is equal to 2 raised to power minus n so with more predictability formatted the data the function is less effective for example in most normal test file, text files the high order bit for each octet is always zero so if a 128 bit hash value is used instead of effectiveness of 2 raised to the power 1 minus 128 the hash function on this type of the data has an effectiveness of 2 raised to the power minus 12 a simple way to improve methods is to perform a one bit circular shift on the hash value after each block is processed hash it has the effect of randomizing the input more completely and overcoming any regularities that appear in the input so you can do it by initializing a set of n bit hash values to 0 and then process each bit block as data and you can perform the rotation operation on the current hash value to the uh, one bit uh, left shift and then x or the block into hash value so this will provide the randomizing the input and it will remove the regularities on the input data so this figure shows that two types of hash function for 16 bit hash values so there are two cases that first state that x it says that it is xor of every 16 bit block the second is xor with the one bit rotation to the right so although the second pr procedure provides good measure of data integrity it is virtually useless for data security when an encrypted hash code is used with a plain text message so given a message it is an easy matter to produce a new message that yields that hash code simply prepare a desired alternate message and then append the n bit block that forces the new message plus block to yield the desired hash code although the simple xor or rotated xor is insufficient if only the hash code is encrypted you may still feel that the such simple function could be useful when the message together with the hash code is encrypted but for using these you have to be very careful so let's look at the requirement and the security for the hash function and before proceeding we need to define the two terms the first term is a premage and the second is collusion premage is defined as uh, the function h on uh, h of x where x is the premage of the h that means it is an encrypted value of input block or a hash value of input block again x is an input and it is a data block whose hash function is performed using the hash function h because the hash function h is many to one mapping before any for any given hash value there will be a general key multiple premages for each value of x the other property is the collusion and it, it occurs if we have two different inputs and have the same hash values for two different inputs so because we are using hash functions for data integrity collisions are clearly undesirable that if we have two different messages which generate the same hash functions it will be very difficult to identify the integrity of each message so for any better algorithm we need to have a good premage and very low collusion this table lists down the generally accepted requirement for the cryptographic hash function the first three properties are the requirement for 
practical application of hash function that your hash function should operate on the variable input size and it should produce the fixed output on each variable input size and it should be efficient the efficiency is measured that h of x is relatively easy to compute for any given value of x making both hardware and software implementation practical the fourth property is preimage resistance and it is a one way property and it is easy to generate a given code using a message but virtually impossible to generate a message if you have the code this property is important if the authentication technique involves use of a secret value the secret value itself is not sent the fifth property second preimage resistance is referred as weak collision resistance and it guarantees that it is infeasible to find an alternate message with the same hash value as a given message so this prevents the forgery when encrypted hash code is used so if this property were not true the attacker would be capable of the following sequence it first observes or intercepts the message plus it encrypts hash code and secondly it can generate an encrypted hash code from the message and finally generate an altered message with the same hash code as the uh, man in the middle attack the hash value that satisfies the first five properties in this table is referred to as weak hash function for the algorithm to be a bit stronger the sixth property is very important which is referred as collision resistant and it also satisfied then it is referred as strong hash function a strong hash function protects against an attack which is one party generates a message for the another party to sign for example if you look at the previous example the user bob writes a message and sends it to alice and she signs it bob finds two messages with the same hash one of which requires alice to pay a small amount and one that requires a large amount so alice signs the first message and bob is then able to claim the second message is authentic and finally your algorithm should have pseudo randomness that the output of the hash function meets standard test for pseudo randomness this diagram shows the relationship among the three resistant properties a function that is collision resistant is also second preimage resistant but the reverse is not true a function can be collision resistant but not preimage resistant as you can see collision resistance is also a preimage resistant but it is not in the uh, reverse direction a function can be preimage resistant but not second preimage resistant so this table shows the resistant properties required for the various hash application so if you use the hash digital signature preimage resistance is provided it is also second preimage resistance and collision is also provided the resistance is required if attacker is able to mount a chosen message attack however intrusion and virus detection hash functions only provide second preimage resistance similarly hash plus metric encryption does not provide any of the uh, resistance and one way password file only provides the preimage resistance and message authentication provides all the three resistance so most important algorithms are digital signature 
and message authentication codes which are most widely used in many applications. On the other hand, all encryption algorithms face some kinds of attacks. There are two categories of attacks on hash functions. One is the most common is brute force attack and finally second is uh, cryptanalysis. A brute force attack does not depend on any specific algorithm and it can be used for all of the algorithm and it only depends on the bit length of the input. Similarly, in the case of hash functions, the attack depends only on the bit length of the hash value. In this way, the method is to pick values at random and try each one at the uh, until a collusion occurs. So if collusion occurs, your brute force attack is uh, successful. On the cryptanalysis, the attack based on the weakness in particular cryptographic algorithm and it seeks to exploit some property of the algorithm to perform some attack other than the exhaustive search. So good algorithm must provide the collision resistance attack. However, for a pre-image or second pre-image attack, an attacker wishes to find the value y such that if you perform the hash function on the value y is equal to the given hash value. The brute force method is to pick values of y at random and try each value until the collision occurs. So for any hash value, the level of effort is proportional to the level of the input 2 raised to power input. Specifically, the attacker would try a lot of options to actually make it successful to generate a given hash value. So for a collision resistant attack, the attacker wishes to find two messages or data block that yields the same function. If you recall, the property of resistance was h of x is equal to h of y for two different values such as x is not equal to y. This turns out to require considerably less effort than a pre-image or second pre-image attack. The effort is uh, required is explained by a mathematical result referred as birthday paradox. And you will propose the following strategy to exploit the birthday paradox in a collusion resistant attack. So the first of all, the source A is prepared to sign a legal message X by appending appropriate M bits hash code and encrypting the hash code with the A's private key. The opponent then generates 2 raised to the power M over 2 variations of X dash of X all with the essentially the same meaning and stores the messages and their hash value. The opponent prepares a fraudulent message Y for which A's signature is desired. Opponent generates minor variations of Y dash and all of which convey essentially the same meaning. For each Y dash, the opponent compo uh, computes the hash value, checks and matches with any of hash values of X generated by the same opponent and continues until a match is found. That is the process continued until Y dash is generated and with the hash value equal to the hash value of X dash values. The opponent offers a valid variation for A or to A for signature which can then be attached to the fraudulent variation of transmission to intended recipient. So because two variations have the same hash code, they will produce the same signature and the opponent is assured of success even though the encryption key is not known. Therefore, 
if a 64 bit hash code is used the level of effort required is only in the order of 2 raised to power 32 because the attack requires 2 raised to power m by 2 effort the generation of many variations that convey the same meaning is not difficult for example the opponent could insert a number of space space backspace character pairs between word throughout the document the variation could then be generated by substituting space backspace space in selected instances alternately the attacker could simply reword the message but retain the meaning as an example is provided here so to summarize for a hash code of a length m the level of effort is required as we have seen is proportional to the following for pre-image attack the level of effort is 2 raised to power m that means you can do it only by a brute force attack similarly for second pre-image attack the effort is again 2 raised to power m and this is again done by brute force attack However, collusion is done by generating a random or guessed uh, inputs based on the inputs of the algorithm. And the effort required in the collusion resistance attack is 2 raised to power m by 2 on average. That means it requires half of the effort in terms of brute force attack. So this figure uh, represents a letter in 2 raised to power 38 variation so if collusion resistance is required and this is desirable for general purpose secure hash code then the value 2 raised to power m by 2 determines the strength of hash code against the brute force attack so this algorithm uh, is a design for 10 million collusion search machine for md5 which has the 128 bit hash length and that could find a collusion within 24 days therefore a 128 bit code may be viewed as inadequate the next step up if a hash code is treated as a sequence of 32 bits is a 160 bit hash length with a hash length of 160 bit the same search machine would require over 4000 years to find a solution so with the today's technology the time would be much shorter so that 160 bit would now appears very suspect so you can you should use a higher bit for such tasks so this concludes today's lecture and in this lecture we discussed about the hash function and typical applications of the hash functions are message authentication and digital signatures however hash functions are also used for storing passwords and intrusion detection similarly there are some requirements and the security discussion of the hash functions and the security is breached by the brute force attack and cryptanalysis attack there are certain properties on hash functions such as pre-image attacks and collusion attacks which help the cryptanalysis to break the hash function if you want to study more about the subject you can read the chapter number 11 of the recommended book or you can conduct question on author thank you very much